This is Cutting Down the Nets, March 11th edition. We are at peak championship week swing. And it's uh, March 11th, so happy birthday to my youngest brother who turns 30 today, which in no way makes me feel old. We did it, guys. Yesterday was finally like a good day where it's like, you know what, this is, this is worth it. And we finished 7-3. and three. Our civilian teams went 7-1, and one, while our armed forces were 0-2. Oh so thanks, Obama, for that. But uh, things look bleak. Um, first two games lost by well over 20 points. Other team couldn't miss. Didn't matter. I mean, just, just got waxed. And then Iona was down like 6. Army was down like 15. Other games were just getting started. It's like, oh my gosh, am I going to lose every game today? And it swung back, you know? So 7-3 and three with uh, a finish of Nebraska covering against Penn State by the hook as they slowly bled their 14-point lead. So overall, we're at 51.4% as we march to beat the VIG. And over the last 102 games, 57%. That's the, the Billy Walters gold standard, which think about being the best in the world at something, and it's 57%. So um, that's 9-7, and seven, guys. So, I mean, if you think about 16-game stretches, if you can just go 9-7, and seven, you're, like, the best in the world. <laughs> it's nuts. And if you've been following along, you know what a grind college basketball can be. But that's why we love it. It's fun. Big card today. I bet the ones in green, considering the ones in yellow, and I've got a few on my radar here. So I'll get into more detail on the green when we get to their show pages, as we, we like to call them. But in the yellow, Syracuse, I think if it got to six, I'd make a small play. Five and a half, not enough for me. Um... Virginia had no problems with the zone, and Syracuse probably due for some regression after yesterday's performance. Temple, South Florida, I think I've bet these exact teams before, and it didn't work out. Temple can go long stretches without, um, without scoring, but this got down to a pick em, which is probably not going to happen. I don't know, kind of interesting, but these teams are... A little too close for me. Morgan State, Florida a and I think I have enough bad teams bet recently, but I do have Morgan State as a clear favorite. Uh, Beach, I, I just want a few more points to be able to take uh, Beach in that situation. I, I think Santa Barbara's better than Irvine in that conference. We'll see how that shakes out, but just my two cents there. And then some games on the radar. Vandy, man... Pippin kids, good. Hope you get to watch them. Uh, it's a fun team. I want a little more points here, but I I don't want to get too far from reality and say Vanderbilt's a really good team, but Vanderbilt's a a, a decent team. Like they're they're legit. So we've ridden them all season, and it looks like they could be back in play today if things break our way. All right, here's the rest of the schedule. Some things to note, Arizona State, Oregon. Look, I love Oregon. I've got an Oregon future. But um, I think this spread is about six points higher than when these teams played fairly recently. And that's accounting for home court, neutral court, that type of stuff. So the, the market likes Oregon too. And sometimes that happens and that can be uh, frustrating because – it's, it's happening with UConn as well. So UConn's minus 13. They're near the bottom. I have met 12 and a half. It's just, look, you can like a team, but if the market likes them just as much, there's not much you can do about it, but sit it out. Don't bet the other side or anything like that. Wisconsin, the Big Ten Network guys, kind of had a hot take last night, which I, I, I can buy into. So a lot of seniors on the Wisconsin team, they've played together forever. Uh, kind of a weird season. Maybe they got bored was the narrative, and I I kind of like that because you know your you know your seed, 
in the Big Ten tournament. You know you're in the dance. And you knew at that point in the season you aren't winning the Big Ten. Like, just, like, can we get on to the postseason might be the mentality. So, um, <laughs> not going to bet based on that, but uh, interesting uh, thing to think about there. Uh, another thing of note is, so UConn has James Booknight back. He missed, gosh, over a month. I think it was like eight games. So you can always ask yourself, you know, what's a player worth to the point spread? Usually it's far less than what you would think. But in this case, we have enough data that you can look at uh, UConn's eight games or so they played without Booknight. Look at the double-digit games they played with them and you know, I come up with the number somewhere around four to six points, which is insane. But that's how much he has helped their offensive and defensive efficiencies. Game one, we will go back to the Roadrunners. Data has us close to a pick em. The concern here is that Western Kentucky has one of the best bigs in the country. Chuck Bassey is the name and I hope Western Kentucky makes it to the tournament because that is a good team they have some good guards too I think it's too many points today but uh, there certainly is fear when you're going against an elite player like that game number two not going to overreact to Minnesota beating Northwestern on a neutral court on a uh, Wednesday opening the Big Ten tournament uh, trust your power ratings, and I've got Ohio State by 17.7 here. But you can see the profile I'm using for Minnesota. I have discredited pretty much all their home wins from earlier in the year. I'm heavily weighting recent play, and this is a uh, team that's just not very good in my opinion. So can Ohio State get back on track? Um I don't know. I think you're looking at this completely different if they don't blow the lead against Illinois. And um, it's a different lens looking at Ohio State. So I'm trying to be a little more um, objective there. And I will play and have played on the Buckeyes. Um, Kevin Willard, coach of Seton Hall, has tremendous success in this tournament. St. John's, Posh Alexander says he's playing. He is very important to this team. They are kind of fun to watch, but um, they're kind of a helter-skelter team that if they're making shots, you have no chance. And if they're not, boy, you've got a chance. Uh, we bet them over the weekend, and I think they fell down 18 nothing to start the game and still won by 14 points. Impressive. Tulane, Ron Hunter. One of my favorite March moments. He's got a blown out Achilles using a roller chair, and his son hits the game winner. And he falls off his chair. Um, just one of the best things ever. So he coaches Tulane now. They take on Tulsa. These are two zone heavy teams, and. I think Tulane's zone defense is better, as evidenced by the data, and Tulsa's zone offense is a lot better. Give me three in the hook here, but probably a tight game. Oh, God. Why do I bet on bad teams? If you're going to bet on a bad team, make sure they can play defense. Will it matter against Baylor? I don't know, but that's a, it's a big number for a neutral court conference game. Have they earned it? Yes. Can they beat them by 50? Yes. But um, K-State has looked better of late, and they are a strong defensive team. I have concerns about them scoring and going through long droughts, but can we just grind out a 17-point loss today? That is the question. We go back to Poly. We got a 15 number. This is a fair line, though. These teams played twice in the regular season at the Anteaters, and I think the the games are like 17 and 19 or something like that. So this it's lying spot on. It's just over the last month, Poly has slightly improved. UCI has stayed pretty constant, and um, we have found value in Poly. Marist takes on Niagara. 
I don't have much to say about Maris. This is why you create a computer program to tell you uh, what games are valuable for the day. Uh, I'm betting Maris, and why? I <laughs> couldn't tell you, other than uh, the efficiencies match up very well for Maris. Norfolk State. Put some respect on the Norfolk upset. Yes, UMBC was the first 16 seed to win, but I still think the spread of Norfolk State beating Missouri was uh, much higher. They take on North Carolina Central today. Some risk here. North Carolina Central has only played, I think, like 13 or 14 games, so it may be... Um, Maybe a weak estimate on my part. I'm using all the data I can to come up with a profile for NCC. They aren't good, and um, it's just a little difficult when there's not as much data. So some risk in that game. I still played it. Fear the Turtle. Give me a point here, but if it was a pick em, I'm fine with it. I expect to, to not have to pay that price, though. Um, the Izzo narrative is strong. And I think there are matchups for Michigan State that are decent. I don't think this is one of them. So Michigan State is a, a team that struggles offensively at times, and they struggle offensively at times because they shoot a tremendous amount of jump shots. And, um, yeah, good luck with that strategy. Um, I love Izzo. I think the, the team's good enough to get into the NCAA tournament, but I am not going to go overboard here and will be against the grain on the Terrapins. Buffalo. Our concerns with Buffalo. We've bet Buffalo a few times. They've uh, covered by 30 points. They've covered by 20 points. They've blown 25-point leads to fail to cover by five. I think teams that lose focus like um, a Buffalo, tend to sharpen that focus when the stakes get higher. So it's easy on a Tuesday night against Bowling Green and you're up 25 to just be like, whatever. But I think in a tournament setting, knowing you could get knocked out brings our best game from Buffalo. Um, beside that, it's a data play. Like, I'm not betting because I think Buffalo will be more focused. That's something like Skip Bayless would say. So, um, just validating a little bit, talking myself through it, if that helps. <laughs> What's up, Ryan? Patrick Chewing, getting it done. They draw Nova today. So, a note on Nova. They're missing Colin Gillespie. He hurt his knee. He's done for the year. And then Justin Moore is uh, not going to play today as well. So the data has this at 4.2, but I'd go down to 6.5 because those guys are missing. I still think Villanova will win, but um, I think it's a it's a good spot to grab um, eight points, anything more than two possessions, really. So I am fine with that. You don't think we'd let a Georgia Tech game on the schedule without betting it, right? Uh, Miami has looked good in the last two days. I have Georgia Tech by 13.1. I'd play it up to 10 just because I can't get enough of it. If uh, if you want some humor today, just find Josh Pastner, like, <laughs> celebration videos in the locker room. He's just a clown. His team loves him. I just, I respect the face shield, the Corona pinata. Just, uh, let's get it done. Let's keep, let's keep marching. And, uh, yes, I have a 250 to one ticket. I'm holding on Georgia Tech. So if they lose today, that may hurt their chances of making the NCAA tournament. I think they're safe, but don't lose to Miami. This is the one that, like, just cements you in. So, big day today, basketball all day, doesn't get better than that. I am excited for March, I hope you are too. We'll have a bracket in a few days, and what a different range of emotions compared to last year at this time, when 
Creighton was canceling at halftime. All the talk about Fred Hoiberg being sick and uh, you just feel the momentum shifting. And then today was the day that it all stopped. So let's cash some bets today. Let's ride the momentum. And thanks for stopping by, cutting down the net.